going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. It's now episode 33. If you're new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nicer review, comment, hashtag, let's go viral, and make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. And also give us five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But today we got a very special episode for you guys. We're going to talk about the fate of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets. But before we hop into that, I want to give a quick shout out to our three subscribers of the day. Romero McNary, Arthur Hurst, and YKM Payton. Appreciate you guys supporting our channel and our podcast overall. But, you know, like I said, we're going to talk about the fate of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets. And, Greg, I'm going to have you start off with your thoughts and concerns on, you know, what has occurred with these two teams throughout the NBA season. Yeah, I'm going to start with the Lakers. The Lakers have been just, like, dealing with injuries lately. LeBron went down. AD went down. And it's just been a not the same Lakers team we've been seeing lately. Just the firepower that they have on that they can have on the offensive end. But one thing that's really impressed me is that they kept their they kept their their firepower on the defensive end. I have to tip my hat off to Frank Vogel. He's very he's bu- getting those guys to buy in on the defensive end and create stops. To, who right now without AD and LeBron, they definitely need those stops to create offense and get out in transition. So that's helping a lot. And without AD and LeBron, they're still like top five in defensive rating, defensive efficiency. So that's impressive. But one thing I want to see with AD and LeBron out is the consistency from the point guard position. Dennis Schroeder, he was in his press conference. I love what he said that he called himself out that he needs to be better coming off the pick and roll, making better decisions. And really just getting the offense rolling and flowing because they really need a guy right now. It's too inconsistent between him, Harold, Kuzma sometimes, Caruso, Horton Tucker. I mean, someone's got to step up and be consistent every night. So I want to see that from the Lakers. And then another thing is that Gasol. Gasol is finally buying into his role. He stopped being a drama queen. Absolutely. And, um, saying that, hey, I'm going to be here. If I'm going to be on the team, I'm going to bring some energy and I'm going to bring good minutes. So I'm glad that he said that and that he's he's, gonna, he's tired of complaining that he's going to come in and be that void and bring that IQ that he has to the floor on the offensive and defensive end. But the Lakers will be fine. I just don't want them to drop too far in the standing because obviously with the playing tournament I mean anything can happen we saw in the March Madness, March Madness anything can happen in a one game uh, elimination so I think the Lakers will be fine once they get injuries everybody comes back from injuries LeBron and bring that team back together with his leadership and, and what they bring on the floor is just tremendous but I have to tip my hat off to Frank Vogel with the, how he's handling this roster right now Right, but you know, I mean, as far as both teams, LA and New York, I think both of these teams are obviously highly favored to make the NBA Finals this year. Nobody in the West can really compete with the Lakers, I don't think. And the Nets, they're looking to make their first Finals appearance since 2003 when they lost to the San Antonio Spurs in six games. In the previous year, they actually lost to the Los Angeles Lakers in four games. They were swept. But yeah, I mean, recently, you know, the Brooklyn Nets, they've been having a pretty productive season you know i mean they've won eight of their last 10 games they're now officially the number one seed in the eastern conference at 36 and 16 and it doesn't seem like there's really too many teams in the eastern conference let alone the nba overall that can really compete with these guys offensively and i think acquiring key players in the buyout market really helped them um but despite all of this recent success i do have a few concerns with this roster and some things that you know they've done that hasn't been too appealing to me from my standpoint. The first thing is the fact that their big three, they've only played in seven games together. Durant has played 20 games this season. Kyrie Irving has missed 15. And the Nets, they're nine and nine without James Harden this year. Uh-huh. I, don't, I think the lack of chemistry could end up hurting them yeah. in the long run. I mean, we, we saw what that did to the Los Angeles Clippers last year. I mean, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they only played in 37 games last season. And given the fact that, you know, they had a small sample size of minutes together, they were unable to build chemistry and ultimately work on their weaknesses as a team. But I mean, I'm also not really a fan of, you know, how this roster is really constructed. Yeah, I mean, me either. You, you, see the, you see the fact that, I mean, they get Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge. They've they brought in players who can really only help you offensively, and they haven't corrected any of their weaknesses, which is on the defensive end of the ball. Blake Griffin, I don't think he's ever been a guy that, you know, has been recognized as an elite defender, no. especially compared to Biggs. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, he he was benched in San Antonio because he couldn't defend the pick and roll. Yeah. And I think ultimately in the postseason, he could be a liability on that end of the basketball. And last but not least, their perimeter defense is hot garbage. God, it's, God awful. it's probably the worst. It's some of the worst. I, defensive coverage I've seen in the NBA this entire season. Yeah. Kyrie Irving, he struggles to guard the pick and roll. He seems to not understand coverages. Uh, he's terrible icing it. Terrible communication. Yeah. yeah. Miscommunication and everything. And I actually thought that when they acquired him on Shepard and Andre Roberson, 
these problems would go away. But, you know, obviously those two were waived. They never got a chance to step on the floor with those guys. But outside of those defensive woes and everything, I think my biggest concern or curiosity is how Steve Nash can manage this team into becoming a legitimate contender and ultimately winning the NBA title. Yeah. I look at some things that, you know, are a bit concerning to me. One thing is the fact that, I mean, he's a first year head coach. You're dealing with a ton of egos in the locker room. Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving. We all know at some point these guys can be knuckleheads. Yeah. And I kind of question how he can handle all of that stuff. But another thing too is how can he make adjustments on both sides of the ball? And what defensive schemes can they implement to limit opponents scoring? Especially in a seven game series where it can change every possession, every minute, every game. So I think that is, that's a huge point nicely. and. To piggyback off your point, I think, in my concern, I think James Harden does a lot for that team that people do not realize. I right. mean, he does a lot. Like, he's averaging, leading the, leading the league in assists with 10.9. Like, he creates so much of the offense. And with the chemistry between him, Kyrie, and KD not really playing together on the floor, I think that might hurt them, too, like you stated, going into the playoffs. So, I mean, Steve Nash has a lot. Of, he, has a lot of, he, has, he has a lot to do getting closer to the postseason. Right, and I think until they can become at least an average defense, I think they can, they have the opportunity of being knocked off in the NBA Finals and maybe surprisingly get knocked off before the NBA Finals and everything. Because one thing I know, you cannot win a championship without defense. I can't exactly. eat a burger without a bun. I can't drive <laughs> a car without a steering wheel. That's true. I can't buy a house without money. You have to have certain things in life to be able to succeed. And ultimately, like I said, if the Nets aren't able to become at least an average defense because they're ranked 25th in defensive rating yeah. as of right now. They won't be able to, you know, go too far in the postseason, if not lose the NBA Finals. Exactly. But switching over to the Lakers, as of late, you know, they've struggled to win games. They're four and six in their last 10 games. Um, they don't really have an anchor offensively. Some nights it's Kyle Kuzma, I guess. Other nights it's it, Montrez Harrell attempts to be that guy. And then, like you stated earlier, Dennis Schroeder, he struggled, but you know, he's trying to be that guy as well initiating the offense and everything but i think my biggest issue with the lakers is the fact that i don't know man uh this team is just it's when you have a team that's heavily constructed on one particular player yeah i think there can be issues with that and i mean what what's your opinion on the los angeles lakers so far i mean i think they're doing okay i mean all the games that you said that they've been losing they've been winnable games they just have to finish and like really really lock in on the offense and they really struggle in offense and they don't know what to do when LeBron and AD is not on the floor and I think that's the problem and we're starting to see that we're starting to see that if these guys didn't have LeBron and AD it would be terrible they would be at the bottom of the west and they just really need to Frank Vogel and somebody need to step up in that locker room now and figure out what we're going to do in the offensive end is it going to be shorter is it going to be Harold is it going to be are we going to stretch it out are we going to get in transition are we going to do different things to make our offense better and I think the addition of Drummond is good, but it's for the defensive end, but I don't I don't really know how they're gonna impl implement him in the offense, but I like what they did in the buyout market, bringing in a three and, another three and D player because Wesley Matthews has been inconsistent. So adding a Ben McLemore, who's been shooting 36% from the three point line is huge. So, I mean, the Lakers have been doing good things. They just need to have everybody on the floor and come together. Yeah, and I mean, with their, with their lack of wins in these last 10 games like i said they were four and six in their last 10 games there's some concerns with average nba fans they all think that oh this lakers team could possibly fall out of playoff no, everybody I think relax that, i think that's absolutely ridiculous yeah. in my opinion just because of like for one with the return of lebron james and anthony davis it's going to do a lot for your ball club obviously when those two come back you're going to be in much better position to come out of wins and everything but I can't see this as long as this at worst this Lakers team they could probably fall to a six seed they don't have the toughest schedule in the world so there's opportunities in these next stretch of games where you know they can come out with some wins yes yeah. they have a few tough games that are coming up that will be nationally televised I mean they got the Brooklyn Nets today at 5 30 but I mean outside of the Nets and possibly what the New York Knicks there's not too many teams that you know they're gonna have a, a legitimate shot of really losing to. Yeah. I mean, they play the Utah Jazz two times um, in about, what, a week from now? But I'm not sure. But I mean, with all that being said, the only way that the Lakers will drop in seeding, in my opinion, is if Dallas, Portland, and, you know, teams like Memphis, they go on a losing streak, a, a winning streak, excuse me, and then the Lakers fail to stay above 500. But ultimately, I don't think anyone in the West can beat Anthony Davis, Davis. and LeBron James. James. 
at full strength. I think Denver is a question mark. The acquisition of Aaron Gordon was absolutely phenomenal. I don't think they've lost a game since they have acquired him. But as far as Phoenix, Phoenix is a good team. I don't necessarily think I trust Chris Paul 100%. And I don't think this is a team that has enough depth and enough talent to, you know, knock off a team like the Lakers. And then as far as the Clippers, the Clippers, they struggle to, you know, close the games, close games. And they haven't been out of the second round in years. Man. Yeah, I don't think they've ever made it to a conference finals. But uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, the Utah Jazz, they probably have one of the best chances of knocking them off. But I don't think they have enough star power. Donovan Mitchell, he's a great player, but he he's He's playing on a team that has the best record in the NBA, and he's not any, even in MVP, MVP contention. Yeah. So what does that really say about your ball club and everything and your best player overall? But, I mean, as long as L.A. stays healthy, they should be shooting up for another NBA Finals appearance, in my opinion. Yeah. And switching over to the legacy of these players on both squads, let's start with the Brooklyn Nets. What do you think about KD, Harden, and Kyrie? I mean, as far as Kevin Durant's legacy, it <laughs> – is he trying to enhance it or is he trying to detain it? Because, I mean, he's stacking the deck wherever he goes. Right? Right. I mean, you, you leave a decent situation in Oklahoma City. I mean, obviously, he, he has every right to go to wherever team he feels like would be the best situation for him. So he decided to go to Golden State. But you cannot be upset with the backlash and all the, you know, negative things that people have to say about you if you're going to make those type of decisions because you're a high caliber player it doesn't make sense for you to really go to a 73, 73 wins team and then expect people to not criticize you exactly but i mean as far as kyrie irving does this really help his legacy uh, i mean it adds another championship to his resume but i don't think it really boosts anything else i mean i guess you prove to people that you can win without lebron yeah but <laughs> You I mean, added James Harden and M you have you're playing with two MVP caliber players, exactly. two former All Stars, well, three former All Stars. DeAndre Jordan was an All Star at one point too, I believe. But the, I think the the re real legacy shift is James Harden. I mean, yeah. he's a guy. He's proven to be like somebody who can put up historic numbers. Some people say he's the best offensive player of all time, better than Michael Jordan, which is a big thing to say. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I think outside of James Harden, I don't think this really alters anybody's le legacy. Maybe Blake Griffin a tad bit, but he doesn't have a big enough role for, in my opinion, for his legacy to be really be, you know, altered all Yeah, I definitely agree with that. With Harding, because he's just like the things that he does in Houston and then coming over here, averaging close to a triple double with the Nets and leading this team and doing all the things on the offensive end. I mean, that'll literally cap off his legacy. He's won MVPs. He's done one scoring titles. I mean, like he's done everything. So, I mean, this would definitely help Harding. But switching over to the Lakers, LeBron, if he wins, if he beats his Nets team, he's the GOAT. No debate. No questions because he's beat a stacked Warriors team. He's right. beat. He's gonna. He's gonna beat a Brooklyn Nets team. I mean, it's just with the roster that he has, and I think this is the one of the best rosters he's had outside of last year. But if he beats his team, that is huge. I mean, I just, man, I nicely. What do you think? I mean, I think I think this definitely puts him in a legitimate. Content, contender for the greatest player of all time. I mean, some people called him that after he came back down 3-1 in 2016 to exactly. the Golden State Warriors. I mean, my thing with LeBron James is he's had such a historic run. I mean, you look at his resume, he's been to 10 NBA Finals. Yes, he's lost six of them, but you're gonna, you have an opportunity of losing more games than you have winning games. And then let's really think about it and break this thing down. How many NBA championships has he been favorite to win i think only two or three out of yeah. those 10 so can we really get on to him about losing all of those champions? and then you guys criticize him about winning in the east and he came over to the west and he and he won a championship last year and one of the hardest situations to do it in the bubble so i mean if he does it again in the west especially with their seating right now and the injuries oh definitely he's definitely the goat yeah in my opinion he was already the greatest player of all time just yeah. because like i think he does everything better than Jordan outside of the the a way that he scores the ball like yeah. Michael Jordan he, I give him I'll give him his credit where credit is due he's an offensive juggernaut but I don't think that we've seen a basketball mind a basketball player someone who's just best all around in every aspect of the game like a LeBron James and I don't yeah. think we'll ever see somebody as good as this guy for years to come totally but agree. as far as Anthony Davis's legacy this is something that I would really want to touch bases on okay Anthony Davis, he's a guy that, you know, he was drafted number 10 to the New Orleans Pelicans. He forces his way out of L.A. two seasons ago, out of, out of New Orleans two seasons ago. And now last year he won, he proved that he could win an NBA title. I think that's the beginning of, you know, his legacy and everything. Yeah. But 
my my thing with Anthony Davis is I think AD has to be the best player in order for the Lakers to win the title this year. I look at that Brooklyn Nets roster and I see that the Nets, they match up well with everybody on the Lakers for the most part, yeah. except for Anthony Davis. Yeah. I don't trust Blake Griffin on uh, AD and I definitely don't trust Marcus Aldridge on him either. So I think Anthony Davis, if he can come in and showcase that, you know, he can be able to take this team above uh, the trenches and everything, he, he has a legitimate shot of doing something that's historic he's gonna be if he knocks these this Brooklyn Nets team off there that would be a monumental moment in his NBA career totally agree and given the fact that you're trying to chase somebody in Tim Duncan and you know those other power forwards who are historic all time I think this is something that you know he he is eager to do but my only concern is will Anthony Davis be healthy this entire postseason yeah Given the fact that you know he's coming off of a what injury was it? I think it's a it was calf a ki- strain. yeah calf strain and Achilles that it's Achilles tendon it all connects together yeah right? all in his right leg so yep. those are my only concerns also given the fact that you know he's gone down multiple times and has had multiple scares last postseason yeah dealing with his foot right. playing so through a foot injury I just worry that he won't be able to be a hundred percent the entire ride but if he if he's able to you know be at least 80, 75, maybe eighty five percent. Along the way, he's got a legitimate shot of being the NBA Finals MVP. And I think he needs to do that in order for the Lakers to win the championship overall. Totally agree. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. It's now episode 33. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Tell a friend about our channel and our podcast and everything. And we would greatly appreciate that. But, you know, outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host. Greg King and we out we out